Welcome to ASW BMSW exam practice test. Our topic today is practice test. Use the link in the description to download the app on the App Store for free practice tests. Number 1. Cultural competence in social work requires a salient understanding of and capacity within all of the following except a. Knowledge of diversity. b. Attitude of accommodation. c. Cultural skills. d. Group affiliations. The answer is D. Group affiliations. Explanation. Cultural competence does not require specific group affiliations relevant to engaged cultures, though this may be helpful. Knowledge of cultural diversity refers to 1. Information gleaned from appropriate literature. 2. Direct involvement with other cultures. 3. Familiarity with traditions and language, as well as 3. An awareness of potential unique regional and other differences. Attitude refers to 1. Awareness and acknowledgement of any personal beliefs, values, biases, and counter-transference issues likely to affect the social work process, 2. A willingness to avoid assumptions, 3. An openness to unique strengths and drawbacks of cultural perspectives, as identified and defined with the client, 4. The need for time to build trust, 5. Sensitivity to discrimination and depression. 6. Cultural variations regarding privacy and confidentiality. 7. Openness to referring clients to more appropriate services, where adequate accommodation cannot be achieved for any reason, personal or otherwise. Number 2. In the LGBT community, the term intersex refers to a. Ambiguous sexual anatomy, hermaphrodite. b. Heterosexual orientation. c sexual encounters outside of preference. d. Sexual attraction to both men and women. The answer is a. Ambiguous sexual anatomy, hermaphrodite. Explanation. Heterosexual orientation is most commonly referred to as being straight. There is no specific term for sexual encounters outside of orientation preference. Sexual attraction to both men and women is known as bisexuality. Homosexual men are most often referred to as gay, while homosexual women are referred to by the term lesbian. Pansexuality refers to an attraction to an association with any partner, regardless of sexual identity. Transgender, also called bigender, refers to an identity different from birth sex type, with a focus on gender. Transgender individuals may live a heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual, or asexual lifestyle. Transsexual individuals have identified themselves as transgender with a focus on sexual orientation. Further, they have an added desire to live an opposite sex lifestyle and desire hormonal and or sexual surgery to achieve physiological congruence. Gender care and intergender are catch-all terms for those who feel they are both male and female, neither male nor female, or entirely all binary gender identity. Number 3. You are seeing a recently returned 26-year-old male military veteran who had been deployed on active duty in the Middle East. He has obvious symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, intrusive memories, flashbacks, hypervigilance, angry outbursts, etc. You should explore the possibility of all of the following as potential causes of these symptoms except a. Combat stress. b. Disciplinary issues. c. Mild traumatic brain injury, MTBI. d. Sexual assault trauma. The answer is B. Disciplinary issues. Explanation. Military discipline, assignment changes, rank changes, sanctions, and so on, would not normally contribute to a diagnosis of post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Combat stress, battle fatigue, is a primary contributor to PTSD. It includes exposure to experiences of violence and mayhem, and the psychological trauma associated with killing and living under the constant stress of being killed. Military sexual trauma, Mountain Standard Time, is often overlooked in recovering veterans, rates of Mountain Standard Time are 22% and 1.2%, respectively, especially if the veteran is male. Mild traumatic brain injury, MTBI, is also an often overlooked contributor. Of note, MTBI does not require loss of consciousness or even a diagnosable concussion to be an issue. Any substantial blow to the head or even close proximity to certain kinds of explosive blasts can bring it on, sometimes immediately and sometimes in a delayed form. The key symptoms are unexplained episodes of confusion, disorientation, loss of concentration, feeling dazed, and so on. Neuropsychiatric consultation is important in such situations. Number 4. 
A 16-year-old boy is acting out in ways that are regularly disruptive of the family's home life and social relationships. It soon becomes clear to the social worker that he feels misunderstood, unappreciated, and isolated from much of the family. To encounter this, the social worker asks each of the other family members, why do you think he is behaving in these ways? This is an example of Mara Salvini Palazzoli's Milan systemic therapy known as a. Hypothesizing. b. Counter paradox. c. Positive connotation. d. Circular questioning. The answer is D. Circular questioning. Explanation. Circular questions are used to enhance relational perspectives by helping family members to take the standpoint of another, particularly with a family member who may otherwise be misunderstood. Hypothesizing is something done by the therapy team, wherein they attempt to understand the presenting problem and formulate a successful intervention, refining throughout the therapeutic process. Counter paradox is an extension of paradoxical prescription, wherein problem behaviors are actually prescribed, by which a problem behavior and all related interactions around it are prescribed. Positive connotation reframes problematic symptoms as efforts to preserve the family and promote solidarity. Other techniques include neutrality, in which therapist family member alliances are avoided to prevent triangulation, and rituals, repetitive behaviors used to counter dysfunctional family rules. Number 5. Types of transference common to group work include all of the following except a. Transference to quiet members, self-figures b. Transference to the social worker, parental figure c. Transference to individual members, sibling figures d. Transference to the group entity, mother womb symbol The answer is a. Transference to quiet members, self-figures explanation. Transference does not occur in a context of figures representing the self. Rather, it is characterized by unconscious redirection of feelings from one person toward another, representing a meaningful figure in the individual's life. Typically, it is the appearance of a childhood relationship and a present relationship, often manifest as feelings and desires unconsciously retained now redirected toward a new object. It often constitutes the emotions of repressed experiences, projected onto an individual serving in substitution for the original target of these repressed impulses. First described by Sigmund Freud, it is an important concept by which to better understand feelings and behaviors. While often considered inappropriate, in truth transference is normal and often unavoidable. It does not represent an underlying pathology, unless the patterns of transference result in thoughts, feelings, or behaviors that are maladaptive. Number 6. A social worker receives a subpoena ordering him to testify in court and to reveal his case notes about his client. The social worker refuses and bases his right to refuse upon the state's statutes regarding a. Privacy b. Confidentiality c. Privilege communication d. Informed consent The answer is c. Privilege communication. Explanation. Privacy refers to control over how one chooses to share oneself physically or intellectually. Confidentiality refers to control over how personal information is shared. Informed consent refers to becoming fully informed before giving consent. Privilege communication addresses confidential information in legal proceedings. Four conditions create a privilege communication. 1. A mutual understanding the exchange was confidential. 2. Confidentiality is deemed important in the relationship. 3. That importance is widely recognized in the community. And 4. The harm of disclosure outweighs the benefits. For social workers, the U.S. Supreme Court case of Jaffe v. Redmond, 1996, recognized privileged communication in federal courts. Other exceptions, beyond number 4, above, include. 1. If a lawsuit centers on emotional damages substantiated by counseling. 2. If the social worker must defend against a client's lawsuit. 3. If the client already disclosed to others. 4. If suicide or direct harm to others is involved. And 5. Where minors are in a custody dispute, in criminal behavior, or were abused or neglected. Number 7. The presence of a strong therapeutic relationship is fundamental to making positive life changes. Among the most important features of a meaningful therapeutic bond is a. Compassion b. Empathy c. Sympathy d. Condolence
The answer is B. Empathy. Explanation. Compassion involves concern for the misfortunes and welfare of another. Condolence involves expressions of compassion and sympathy. Sympathy literally means to feel with or have a resonate feeling for another. Feelings of compassion and sympathy are expressed in carefully chosen words of condolence. Empathy, however, is deeper. It literally means to feel into the heart and mind of another, projecting oneself into their situation, feelings, and experiences. The term originated in psychology, drawn as a translation from a German term. It is an important tool in creating a therapeutic bond, as it involves a shared emotional state most fully realized when one has been there, whereas sympathy is the natural state when one has not. Other important components of a strong therapeutic relationship include 1. Warmth, a show of genuine care and acceptance, 2. Authenticity genuineness, open and natural sharing in a meaningful way, and 3. Trust, which involves a certainty of safety and predictability, and is maintained by practices such as confidentiality and privacy. Number 8. A social worker has been working with a client for 18 months, and the client's problem has been fully addressed and resolved. An appropriate process of termination has been concluded, and all services have been discontinued. The state has no prevailing statute for a period of retention for social work records. The client's record should now next be a. Destroyed. b. Thinned and only essential information retained. c. Kept intact for another three years. d. Retained in accordance with state medical record statutes. The answer is D. Retained in accordance with state medical record statutes. Explanation. Not all states have statutes governing the retention period for social work clinical notes. Of those states that do have statutes, the minimum retention period was three years and the maximum as much as 10 years. Other standards may apply for clients under the age of majority, who may have further need of the records during their minor years. Where no statutes exist, it has been advised that clinicians retain records in accordance with statutes governing the management of medical records. Regardless, clinicians should be sensitive to the fact that clients may return for further services at a future date, whereupon a prior record could be of considerable assistance in exploring, understanding, and resolving any subsequent problems. Number 9. The ethical concept of self-determination refers to a. The right to do anything one wants to do. b. The right to require others to help one achieve goals. c. The right to make choices dangerous to others. d. The right to personal autonomy and decision-making. The answer is d. The right to personal autonomy and decision-making. Explanation. Social workers are charged with helping their clients choose their own life's direction and destiny. An exception is when a client's choices are suicidal, homicidal, or abusive of others' rights. True self-determination requires 1. The internal capacity for autonomy, 2. Freedom from external constraints, and 3. Information to make well-informed choices. Social workers should primarily assist clients in identifying and clarifying their own goals, rather than goals others might choose for them. Involuntary hospitalization or other mandated limits placed on self-determination do not allow professionals to fully ignore this ethical principle. Thus, the concepts of least restrictive and least intrusive come into play. Involuntary or mandated courses of action should be used only as a last result as is possible, without unduly risking the client's life or intruding upon or abusing other individuals. Number 10. As a chemical dependency counselor, you are counseling a 38-year-old married man regarding his ongoing use of alcohol. The client consumes alcohol on weekends and at parties and tends to drink heavily about twice each month. At times, recovery from significant inebriation has resulted in his being unable to go to work on a Monday and on one occasion he was given a DUI citation, resulting in this court-ordered counseling. The pattern of the client's alcohol use is best described as a alcohol intoxication b alcohol use disorder c recreational alcohol use d alcohol withdrawal the answer is b alcohol use disorder explanation the client has at least two of the possible 11 criteria for alcohol use disorder most important are the ones that could change the course of his life missing work and legal issues Symptoms of withdrawal, delirium treatments, and so on. 
arise with the cessation of drinking, but are not mentioned in this scenario, and may not occur as the client is said to just drink on the weekends. Symptoms of alcohol intoxication, slurred speech, impaired gait, attention and memory impairment, and so on. Is not mentioned in this scenario. Recreational use involves sporadic ingestion at such times, and in such a way as to avoid negative family, employment, and social consequences, but used heavily enough to produce a pleasurable, recreational, effect. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for updated videos every week.